The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to go over summer plant diseases as well as things you shouldn't have to worry about in your garden or you shouldn't worry about. And our guest is author Sharon Lovejoy, and your garden questions will get answered. The hour is full, and it starts right now. Join us. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Garden with Joey and Holly radio show. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us on the program. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. Whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022, a radio app, a uh, through our parent website, which is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com, the season six tab at the top of the page, podcast replay or in studio video replay, we thank you for that. If you want to be part of the program, you can certainly do that by sending us an email. Garden Talk Radio at gmail.com, Garden Talk Radio at gmail.com, or you can uh, give us a call on the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods. That number is 1 800 927 Show. 1 800 927 7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco conscious home chef. Their pans are non toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made right here in the USA. Their award winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo. Cookware is a 12-inch skillet set with a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. All right, Holly, let's get in the program. And as we are in the summer months now, there are bugs and diseases in which our garden is going or is going to be affected by so we're going to go over a handful of diseases that your plants are probably going to acquire in some maybe most situations and uh, what we can do in order to maybe prevent them before that occurs sure so for for sure one thing or a few things that come into play that will keep your plants healthy is consistent watering um, and then things that make your plants susceptible to to a lot of these problems, diseases, etc., is high humidity. If you crowd your plants too much, uh, poor air circulation around your plants, and then also overwatering, underwatering, irregular watering, poor soil health, and then deficient or excess nutrients. A lot of times, people. Especially when you're a new gardener, you think, well, if a little fertilizer is good, then that means that more is better, and this could cause problems. Same thing if you don't follow the directions on the fertilizer package. And also, not watering properly, you might think, well, you know, my neighbor only waters once a week, but you may not know that your neighbor has um, uh, drip. drip drip irrigation underneath their mulch, and maybe they water once a week, week because... It makes them happy, and they have drip irrigation all the other days of the week. Well, with the uh, uh, overuse of fertilizer, you can, to some degree, some of that will wash away. The other disadvantage to using more fertilizer than what the bag has recommended you to use for your particular situation is it's not getting used up. You are adding too much fertilizer to... To the, to the soil. So if X plant, the fertilizer bag says two cups for every so many square foot, and you say, well, let's go six. You're wasting that. That's not going to utilize or be utilized by that plant. And it's most likely going to flush away or fertilize other things that you don't want it to feed. Absolutely. And that is what's very important is to follow the directions. So the first plant problem we have is blossom end rot. And this is something that you find on tomatoes. Uh, 
I see this a lot. We see this a lot on social media. People post a picture of a green or ripened tomato, and the bottom portion of it is completely black and sunken in. And there's 46 and a half comments uh, uh, below that saying, add Tums, add milk, add bags of calcium. You need calcium. Add more calcium and water it in too. Add calcium. You don't need calcium. That is a calcium deficiency. Most of our gardens, if we would go get a calcium test, we would have more calcium than we knew what to do with. The problem is that the calcium, which is readily available in your soil, cannot be uptake through the root system into the plant for proper fruit development because the soil is too dry. We need moisture in the soil to allow nutrients and nutrients to be uptaken from the soil to the plant to develop the leaves and the fruit on it. So just water. Keep the soil moist. And that will allow what the plant needs to be uptaken to properly develop the fruit. Now, once you see that on your plant, whether they are green and developing and black on the bottom or already red, remove them immediately. By watering today, that does not fix the problem that's on the plant right now. By watering today, that will greatly reduce the opportunity for that problem to reoccur on the next set of flower and fruit that plant is producing, the tomato plant. Absolutely. And that's what's important is, again, a lot of these problems come down to not watering, overwatering, underwatering, what have you. Well, a little bit of it is just uneducated. Right. There's just so much to know. You you maybe just. Right. But that's what I'm saying is that that's a lot of these problems are because of that. So another problem is powdery mildew and powdery mildew exists on vine crops, um, mostly like squash, melons. Those are the main two. Grape, can, beans, cucumbers. Yeah, can occur on grape, beans, cucumbers. But mostly you'll see it a lot of times on squash and melon plants because how they vine and how their leaves stay parallel to the ground it allows for that mildew to grow. You can get powdery mildew from high humidity, especially late summer where the nights are maybe damp and then the humidity is high during the day. So like August, September, you will sometimes see this. And there's a few solutions. One is you can take a solution of one part milk to two parts water and you spray it on the plant and that that components in on the leaves of the plant, um, the component of those that property breaks up the powdery mildew. Some people do the same with the vinegar. Um, You'd want to watch yourself on the vinegar as it even the bottled vinegar that you get at the store is 3% acidic, but 5%. that 5% acidic, but that can damage some of your leaf structure on some of your plants. Right. Now, if you're if you're, you have a plant that has powdery mildew and you can, it's less than 25% of the leaves, you can just remove the leaves to help stop the spread. There are disease, disease resistant varieties of, of uh, squash, melons, etc. Otherwise, sometimes you just have to control it as it comes on. And a lot of times because it is usually near August or end of summer, it's close enough to harvest where you can kind of control it. Now, whenever you are dealing with powdery mildew, you want to be careful on how and what you touch and how you remove that particular portion of the plant out of your garden as those are spores that will drop or as distributed by your hand against other plants that are susceptible to that uh, blo- uh, that uh, powdery mildew. So you want to be careful. You want to bag it while it's right there and get rid of it or you know maneuver it out of the garden so it's not spreading in additional on additional plants. Absolutely. So that's very important. So the next one we have is bean rust and bean rust is literally it looks like rust on the leaves of your bean plants your um pole beans i don't think we've ever seen it we've not seen it much on no on the the bush beans and this is something that is kind of random there's really no rhyme or reason as to why it occurs but what you want to do is if you do see it you'll know it you'll rub your finger on it. it it kind of is like a powdery rusty color on the leaves of your beans you want to, you can remove the leaves up to about 25% if you think that will take care of it. You can spray fungicide on it. But again, these are this is typically something that happens 
um, where you're near your end of your gardening season, you would just want to remove those plants and you want to throw them away. You don't want to put them in compost, put them for the city to keep, Get burn rid them. Of them. You Get want rid to of them. trash them. You yeah. want to put them in the trash. All right. Look, uh, potato and root crop scab. So this is this is another fungus. And people may not be aware. They dig the potatoes up and it looks all gnarly and kind of broken skin. But, oh, okay, well, it just didn't get enough water. It'll be okay. We'll, and we'll just use it. Right. So this is a fungus that lives in your soil. There's good and bad things, bacteria, fungus. Some, sometimes we think there's more bad than good. But right. there's a balance in there's, most places. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff that lives in our soil. And this is this is one of them is the um, the uh, the scab, and you will see this typically on potatoes. Sometimes people do see it on other root crops. So it, because it lives in your soil, you want to then you want to move. You want to rotate your crops, and you need to rotate your potato crops every three to four years, as is. More frequently is better. You can wait up to six years, but either way, you want to rotate your crops to get that. Put a non-root crop where that scab is occurring so that it, the soil can kind of remediate itself and balance the fungus back out. Right. And you will, if you're uncertain of what it looks like, you can uh, do a search and find out what that what it is. Absolutely. And there's other things that you can do, whether it be adjusting the pH in your soil, but most p- people's gardens are at a mid-level pH as is. So if you do feel that your soil is too acidic or too alkaline, you can definitely get a soil test. But most people keep a balanced soil, alkalinity, acidity, just natural. And if you've got the potato scab, you want to peel the potatoes very thoroughly. You want to make sure all that is removed and any dark areas or dark places, remove that as well. And it can be consumed. Um, But if if it's concerning to you, you can just throw it out and and make it safer that way right all right and finally we have oh finally we have this is a a problem for um things like cucumbers gourds musk melons it is called anthrac nose and it's a destructive fungal disease as well you will see it on the cucumbers typically on the leaves of the plant but then on the gourds melons and squash sometimes it is on the body um what what does it look like it looks like little sunken watery spots okay so and then it goes from like looking sunken yellow watery to turning brown yeah it also can be on the leaves as well just, yeah, just on the cucumbers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you're uncertain of what you may have in the form of diseases this summer, you can certainly send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com and please attach a photograph to said email to help us identify your situation and problem much, much easier. Well, somebody else that makes our problems much, much easier go, go that goes away is Walton's Incorporated. Absolutely. So we are brought to you today by our sponsor, Walton's Inc. Listen, we know you care about where your food comes from. You can can preserve your fruits and vegetables. But what about the meat? At waltonsinc.com, you can get all the equipment, seasoning, and supplies to make sausage, jerky, and any other meat products your way to your high standards. Do you want to make snack sticks or jerky that is actually tasty and delicious? Walton's has a website called meatgistics.com, and it's an informational site to help educate you with over 15,000 users. And then you can also find everything from a full line of their own meat grinders, mixers, sausage stuffers, seasonings, and more at waltonsinc.com. They help you go from animal to edible, Walton's everything but the meat. If you use code GROW50, you save 10% off orders of 50 or more and get free shipping. When we come back, we're going to go over a number of items in your garden that you may think you need to worry about, but you really don't. You're listening to The Garden with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. The Water Hoop is a portable water sprinkler system that allows you to target water evenly around the root ball of your tree or bush. Conforms to various shapes for your watering needs. The Water Hoop reduces runoff and saves money. Visit waterhoop.com. 
Fleet Farm is your gardening headquarters. Stop in today for everything you need for an amazing lawn and garden. Find great deals and trusted brands. Check out their huge selection of lawn care, seed, fertilizer, and even pest control. Plus, you can pick up hand tools, power tools, and equipment. And lawnmowers to keep your space looking great. Get everything you need in one spot, all at your garden headquarters, Fleet Farm. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com, use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. 90% of the world's flowering plants require pollination to reproduce. Without pollinators, we humans would not survive. Here at Finding Nectar, a Denver suburb based nursery providing flowering plants that are bee, butterfly, moth, and bat friendly, we are striving to get more pollinators into the backyards of Colorado. Together, we can increase the pollinating population one plant at a time. Affordable plants. Check all the plants out at 1550 Highway 72 in Arveda and at FindingNectar.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us today. A lot of places are hot. A lot of places are dry, Holly. And uh, hard to water those plants. But with the tree diaper, that job's taken care of for you. Yeah, if your plants could talk, they would have a few complaints about maybe not being properly watered or watered too much, either too much or too little. But how do you water it properly? Take the guesswork by using the tree diaper. Tree diaper is a revolutionary watering system that stabilizes soil moisture by taking up excess water and slowly releases it into the plants or the soil when it needs it. The tree diaper is filled with water from rain or when when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No pipes, hoses, or electricity needed. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, a tree diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Keep your plants happy at treediaper.com. You can find all the sizes they have available. Made in the USA, that's treediaper.com. Absolutely works and works phenomenally. Treediaper.com. Well, as we are gardeners, we often see things in our garden that concern us and things that we kind of know what to do about and other things that we go well maybe if we don't do anything it'll go away oftentimes we worry about things in the garden and if you're the uh, worrying type uh, there is a verse in the bible if that's interesting to you that says don't worry but pray about everything you can look it up that uh, is something that may help you out but there's a number of things here in the garden that we don't need to worry about that you may think is concerning but we're going to go over them so you don't have to worry about them ever again. Right. So the first one is maple leaf tar spot. So this is a fungi. You will see it. You've probably seen it. You've probably seen it and not even realized it because it does affect a, a wide variety of maple trees. And it also affects a large portion of maple trees. And so this is a dark spot on the maple leaves. And it looks like somebody took a permanent marker and put like a little circle spot on each and every maple leaf. And it's just a fungi. And it does not affect not you. Not as fun of a guy as you think it is. <laughs> no. It does not affect you or your soil. And it's perfectly fine to use those leaves on your garden. Right. Because that does not transfer to um, other species so of plants. Another thing in which uh, people are concerned with, and we see a number of these questions across multiple social media platforms, is there's mushrooms in my soil. There's mushrooms in my straw bell garden. What do I do? What do I do? Is this bad? No, it's not bad. So mushrooms are just another one of those fun, fun guys that we live with, and it, it it they just occur in the soil. And if a lot of times people will get them at the same time every year in the same spot, and they'll say, you know, is there anything I can do to get rid of them? And it's like they'll 
Go away. Usually. Don't do anything. That Don't, is yeah. great soil you got there. Now, people do get concerned because their children or their dogs might eat them, and you definitely don't want that. So maybe you can block off the area. Just knock them over with yeah, the tool. Yeah, just knock them over, whatever. Um, I would, you just leave them alone. You live, live in harmony with the mushrooms. Algae is building up on my rain barrels. The clear ones, some of the, the more opaque ones, the white ones, you can see what's going on inside of them. Uh, people are concerned that that is not good. Well, algae, no, it's, it's not a problem. Well, That's, look at ponds. Right. Ponds will have algae. Streams. Look at Lake Michigan. Right. That's an entirely different but, problem. But algae bloom, that's, right. a, that's a different yes. detrimental that's different. environmental thing. Absolutely. Um, algae in a rain barrel is perfectly fine. It will just add, any, if anything, a fertilizer boost to, now, the, your, to your soil. Right. We're talking, you know. A little bit algae. If the whole thing is, you know, just a gob of algae, there's another, there's more issues there. You don't want the whole barrel to be no. algae. Just a little bit on the walls right. is fine. Right. That's perfectly Not normal. palatable for humans, but good for plants. Don't, yeah, don't drink that water. Um, so if you, if it does get out of control or the water starts to have like a really funky algae, like a dead, even like a dead fish smell, right. then you want to drain your rain barrel and you do want to... Take a solution of one uh, three quarter cup of bleach with one gallon of water, and scrub that rain barrel, and then that should help. Now, um, some people may say, "Well, how do I get in that rain barrel?" Because there's just a little, uh, sp- a little hole in the top. Well, you might have to do um, do some um, hard handyman work and um, open up that hole a little bit bigger in order to get in there. Uh, now, there are companies, and they're not a sponsor. Of, of the show, and I don't have specific names, but there are companies in which provides tablets in which you can put in your rain barrel, which is totally safe, but it prevents the algae from building or growing inside of it, kind of neutralizes uh, that type of environment. So that is something that you may want to look into. Right. And that's that's perfectly fine as well, especially if it's not going to affect your plants. And uh, a big one here, we see a lot of my zucchini plants my pumpkins my uh p- vine plants are all wilting well what's going on outside well it's 112 degrees these plants who have that have large surface areas uh, will wilt or reduce the surface contact that they have available now disclaimer if these plants don't return back to full strength when the sun goes down you've got other issues such as vine bore in your squash if the plants are just wilting during the hottest portion of the day and returning to full strength or full uh surface area at the sundown or early in the morning you want to keep them watered but this is a natural occurring uh method of reducing surface area to prevent the plants they're 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 keeping cool the best they can we will you see this very commonly in the agricultural fields with corn uh, even when the soil is moist, but this is more common when the soil is dry, the leaves of the corn will curl up super tight to reduce the surface area, to, to reduce the, the amount of heat that they're absorbing. So with sweet corn or agricultural corn, or in this instance, wilt on vine crops, this is normal. If it returns at sundown and sun at, after the sun goes away, if it doesn't, then you have other additional issues uh, to look at. Uh, another one here is I've got purslane, but per, pe- uh, pe- pe- people don't know what this is. Sure. So purslane, it's a uh, it's a low it's a it's a weed essentially. A good um, weed. It's a good weed, and it kind of grows level with the ground, and it has more of like that succulent leaf looking structure. And this is actually a very like Joy said, it's a good weed. You can actually eat it, um, especially when it's in a more uh, a younger stage. You can eat it as because it has high omega-3 fatty acids, vitamin A and C. And you can eat it. Now, with any disclaimer here, with any plant, you need to be sure you're 100% sure of what it is before you consume it or feed it to people. Um, but... It has a unique taste to it, and it has a very, like Holly said, a very beneficial, very beneficial properties in it. Um, so that's something you want to be aware of. Um, what many people often stress about is weeds, Holly. Got to have everything 
Picture Perfect magazine cover, beautiful PBS program. They're coming to film today, Pristine Garden. Well, there's nothing wrong with that if that's what makes you happy um, and if you have the time. But weeds are not... They're not a problem until they become a problem. For the most part, if you have weeds and as long as they're not completely blocking all your plants, they're not choking up the roots of your plants. Weeds typically have, like some weeds do have deep roots, but most weeds have shallow roots and they're not going to affect the deep roots of your plants as they as your plants become established. So weeds are not a huge problem. I would, however, try to prevent weeds from reseeding. Mm-hmm. That's what's important. So if you... You know, go out there, you see weeds that are three inches tall. You probably do want to start thinking about, you know, at some point pulling them. If they, if you go out there and their your weeds are like an inch tall, I wouldn't worry about it until, you know, you, well, some you weeds can, can also, you can also kind of rotate what you pull to, so you don't feel like it's overwhelming and kind of break your garden up to get rid of the weeds right you can pull your the smaller weeds and lay them on the soil to prevent a or to, to create a mulch and some weeds um in the hottest portions of the summer if they are low growing weeds they can actually in some instances you can label it as a living mulch they can reduce the amount of sun on that soil and prevent some moisture uh from escaping from the soil even though that plant is using some of the moisture in order to grow itself right just like we talked about purslane purslane is a what i would call like a ground cover weed because it is level with the soil and it doesn't last long and it doesn't last long now if you have something where maybe it's like huge thistles you do want to pull those those have quite a taproot and they do overtake a little bit Another thing is sometimes we've seen weeds as what people call as trap plants where you might have a weed growing next to a tomato plant and that, that weed is full of aphids and the, those aphids are not bothering the tomato plant. Leave it there. And uh, the last one on our list, Tali, is dog vomit. Not what actually comes out of a dog's mouth, but it is a fungal growth that appears at a glance to look as if a dog did... Uh, return its dinner right it's a yeah it's a it's a as joey had said a fungus a it comes growth. in a couple of different colors too yeah <laughs> fantastic um so this is something that's perfectly normal a lot of times people see this if they do straw bale gardening or they just see it um, somewhere in their garden but it's fine you just leave it be and it, it just means that you have some good healthy spores and you'll see and there's a couple of different ways this uh, occurs sometimes on wood mulch other times you'll see it grow up the stalk of a pepper plant and kind of consume the lower half of the pepper plant and then within 24 hours it has dissipated and as you couldn't even tell it was there if you see it don't touch it just let it do its thing it's not harmful i mean don't be eating it but if it's on uh on edible fruit or leaves uh make your own conscious decision on whether or not you should scrub that particular portion of the plant before you consume it or just toss that particular uh, portion of the plant before you consume it. Right. Um, well, that's some, that's some of the things that, in which you don't have to worry about this summer. But one thing you do have to worry about, I guess, if you don't want to, like we talked about, pray about it, uh, you can. Uh, it's going to be those nasty Japanese beetles that are going to be uh, wreaking havoc if they are not already, and I've already seen some, so they're probably in your yard too, Holly. Yeah, if you're looking to successfully control beetles without damaging the environment, you can look no further than Beetle Gone from Phylum Bioproducts. It's derived from a naturally occurring soil bacteria. Beetle Gone is the only organic solution that successfully controls beetle invaders. You just mix the powder with water and spray on your plants. What's, once it's ingested, the targeted pests will stop feeding and die. And since it's the only organic... Isn't that sweet? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's better than eating your plants. Yeah. And since it's an organic BT product, you know it is a great choice to use on your fruits and veggies in addition to your ornamental flowers and trees and shrubs. Not only does Beetle Gone work, but what is the best part about the product is that it's safe around beneficial insects such as butterflies, bees, and butterflies, bees, and um, ladybugs. With with uh, zero water toxicity issues. Beetle Gone from PhylumBioproducts.com. That's BeetleGone.com. 
BeetleGone.com, and you can use coupon code GARDENTALK10 at checkout to save 10% on your order. Hang out with us. Author Sharon Lovejoy will be with us moments away right after this. You're listening to The Garden with Joey and Holly Radio Show. Have a garden question? Give Joey and Holly a call now or anytime 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-SHOW. If you can't get through, leave a message and they will call you back. Call now 1-800-927-SHOW. Ship Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door for free. Ship Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to ChipDrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. This week's garden tip is sponsored by The Amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit DrZymes.com forward slash garden talk. Up to the day of harvest, The Amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator is safe. When applying the amazing Dr. Zymes, the key is to cover the plant under the leaves and on top, the stem and fruit. It will not hurt and can be done the day of harvest too. Foliar feeding is used to feed plants by applying liquid fertilizer directly to the leaves. Plants can also absorb essential elements through their leaves. This will prevent pest problems and fungal problems and ensure a high rate of success. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the day of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. It's a struggle to find fruit that isn't a disappointment or a waste of money, especially peaches at the grocery store. You bring them home, they turn mealy and gross. Well, Tree Riot Fruit Company has the answer. They deliver fruit straight from the farm, obsessed with quality, so you can actually experience the joy of a great tasting fruit. Love Georgia peaches? Tree Ripe delivers the best peaches you'll ever eat directly from the farm within days of being picked. Peach season starts June 15th and goes through August 4th. In July, they also deliver Michigan blueberries. You can find them at over 400 Peach Stops events throughout the Midwest or have fruit delivered directly to your home. All the event details and ordering information can be found at their website, tree-ripe.com. An extra bonus for you listeners, get 10% off your first purchase when you order online only, tree-ripe.com, by using coupon code HOLLY10, H-O-L-L-Y-1-0. A non-selective herbicide that is also USDA certified? You bet. No more weeds by Naturally Green Products. The same great company that brings you no more bugs, no more weeds, kills weeds with no harsh chemicals, no glyphosate. No More Weeds is a commercial grade vinegar base with a propriety sticking agent. Great around pools, decks, patios, etc. Visit natgreenproducts.com, enter promo code WEEDS, W-E-E-D-S, and buy three one-gallon size units get the fourth one free brought to you by blue ribbon organics providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens farms landscaping and more visit blue ribbon or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you a little bit of summer is what the whole year's all about barbecues parties with friends the fun is endless unless the sun or thunderstorms have damaged your outdoor furniture Keep it looking brand new with custom protective covers from CoversAndAll.com. They have fabric choices for days that are 100% waterproof, coated to protect against sun, and can be custom designed for any size or shape, and placing or removing them. Easy peasy. Visit CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% on your purchase. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. 
Armchair and Lovejoy moments away. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Simple Grow has the product for you and your plants. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow their potential. Simple Grow offers 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you are getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow all natural, odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient worm castings. No chemicals or additives will seep into your food and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. You can order by the ton, truckload, bag, or bundle. You can check out what Simple Grow 100% worm castings can do for your, for your plants. And order today at simplegrow.com. Well, Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline, sponsored by Proclamation, brought to you by Proclamation Goods, and bring in our guest for this week. Sharon Lovejoy is a well written author of both fiction and nonfiction, an illustrator, gardener, and has been on many television shows, radio shows, and podcasts. Welcome to the program, Sharon. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day, not only to educate Holly and myself, but all of our listeners. And I'll, I'll get started with this. You Clearly, with all your books that you've written, you, you are a passionate gardener. You love gardening. And we enjoy gardening with our nieces and nephews. What are some unique and extra fun things you can do to get kids into the garden? Well, you know, one of the most important things I think, Joey, is don't ever say let's go work in the garden because that's a sure way to turn a child against gardening. And so I will always go say let's go see what's going on in the garden. And my grands love it. And We taste our way through the garden, edible flowers, uh, peas that are in bloom. And we take, and it's my first gift that I give children, a good magnifying glass and a stethoscope. And the magnifying glass, it brings the world into macroscopic uh, view. So kids can see the little things, the ants that are, that are milking the aphids, and they can see that, you know, they, they just, they get an up close and personal view that's not possible just going out and running through the garden. So I like to take time for those little things, and that gets them excited. And I think also propagating is exciting and starting seeds oh my gosh it's so wonderful to have kids start seeds and to go through that whole process and to be able to see what they planted that it has life and it's their baby and it's just it's a wonderful wonderful thing explain what the stethoscope uh, is used for for the kids (laughs) well um i can't remember how i first started using it but You have to um, be careful not to move it around a lot when you put it on a plant and you can't be by a river, stream, or the ocean, or a busy road, but you lay the stethoscope right onto the stem of the plant. And I had some of my best luck with tomatoes and pumpkins, things that are growing so that children can hear what's going on inside the plant. And it is an amazing experience. And on a tree, sometimes you hear things chewing on the tree or tapping on the tree or a woodpecker um, on things like cucumbers and tomatoes and pumpkins. You know how your stomach sounds when you have a big, big helping of beans. You can actually hear the pumpkins talking to you. And it is so amazing. I've had some doubting Thomases who said, Oh, I don't believe that. And then they go out in the field and they listen to the tomatoes on the vine or the pumpkin and their children too. It's, it's pretty exciting. And it teaches kids that these are beings as well. They're beings that deserve respect. And when I was teaching in Cincinnati inner city schools, the kids ended up writing me a letter and saying, we, we talked to 13 trees and these are their voices. And they told me, you know, willow is a slurper. <laughs> And red bud sounds like fairies, pink, 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 and just you know, getting the kids involved that way, so they realize that they're dealing with living, growing things. It's so important. That's fantastic. So, just like many of us, we all have a history of gardening. How we got into it? How did you get your right. start in gardening? And was it were you an adult? Were you younger? And what inspired that gardening interest? Well, my grandmother loved joy was a botanist and she belonged to different plant societies and she grew 
many different fruit trees, many berries, all kinds. She belonged to the Iris Society and the Gladiolus, you know, all these different groups. And uh, my parents had lived with my grandmother Lovejoy and then built a tiny little redwood cottage in under the apricot trees. So every morning in my life until I was seven, I would go out into the garden, which was a incredible garden, and my grandmother and I would interact. We'd talk to the plants. We had hollyhocks. We had boysenberries. We had uh, blueberries. We had apricots, guavas, fig, you know, you name it. And the funny thing is, now I virtually have that same garden here at home. It's as though she planted those seeds inside me and they're growing here. It's just very much my childhood garden here now. So, you know, whatever we do with children, if we take time and we are, you know, we don't do parallel time, we do interactive time. We weave ourselves into the children's time and we listen to them. That changes their lives forever. And that's what my grandmother Lovejoy did for me. And I started first growing things in um, cans tomato cans and things like that and um, I had all sorts of things from pine trees acorns we, we tried everything um, beans uh, potatoes and we grew a lot of them in containers because it was just easier for me to deal with a small space and I say you know when you're working with children start small because you don't want them to be overwhelmed and I and, you know, it's changed my life. I mean, it, here I am, a grown-up, sort of, I guess. <laughs> and, and as much as any gardener who loves gardening can ever be a grown-up, because there's that child inside of us that just shines when we're talking about our garden or in our garden. And that's what my grandmother gave me. And it's a gift that I've passed on to my son, who's a fabulous gardener, fabulous gardener, my daughter-in-law, and my grandchildren and they go into the garden and they'll stop at a pineapple guava and say look we can eat these and they'll pick off the the blooms um, they know that borage tastes like cucumbers they know that they can do rose petals they know that nothing here has any poisons on it so they you know they've already started interacting with the garden just as i did so i hope i'm giving them a gift of that's a lifetime gift and I really hope that they carry it with them the way my son has. Well, your grandmother and you created memories, and then you've created memories with your son and your grandchildren. That's right. That's, you know, that would make her happy. She's smiling at me from up above, I hope, so she knows that it's been it's been carried on. So it's a, it's a wonderful gift to give children. Now let's talk about vermicomposting, the, the process of composting with worms. What are your best tips for vermicomposting, and what is something that you would avoid in regards to the process of vermicomposting? Well, first of all, no meat, or you'll get a terrible crop, and I won't even mention the M word, but you'll get them because the flies smell the meat and they lay their eggs on there. So no meat. Um, a lot of people say no dairy products, but I've had no problems with dairy products. The, um, the, the girls, I call them my girls, even though we know they're not girls. Um, the girls don't like avocados. Uh, they like the interior of the avocados, but they don't want the pits or the skins. They don't like um, husks of corn or corn cobs, but they pretty much take care. We don't have a garbage disposal, and they pretty much take care of all our garbage. And we eat virtually every meal at home, and we, we have company, and you know we can handle many pounds of garbage a week. In fact, I don't even understand why city people that pick up garbage don't have vermicomposting going on. It's just so easy. You know, the, and then the main thing is you have to keep them wet because they, they want to be able to slip in and out of the garbage and they just do such a great job. And then their tea is wonderful and their castings are like gold for the garden. Just wonderful. Fantastic. So we are talking with Sharon Lovejoy, a well-written author of both fiction, nonfiction, and, um, and, and more. So you have a really great and natural tip on how to catch slugs. Tell us more <laughs> about that. 
Well, it's so funny because I was t told the, tr the trick of the grapefruit rind, and that sounds weird, but I do things like I put out a wet long board for the slugs to go under. I put containers on their side with wet newspaper in them, but I've had the best luck. And it was funny because when I wrote Trowel and Air, my editor said, this can't possibly work. Well, I had written about it in a magazine article, and a, young, a little girl sent me a picture of the before of a grapefruit rind and then the after, and it was just packed with slugs. Oh, my gosh. It <laughs> really works. I put a damp um, grapefruit that's already, you know, you eat the, the insides out. I put it upside down in a damp area of the garden. Um, not right side up because they like to hide underneath them. And in the morning I get up and there'll be 20 or 30 slugs in there and I scrape them into warm soapy water. And then I add them to the, you know, take them out of the water and add them to the worm bin. They're gone by that time. So they are, um, they, for some reason they love grapefruit and they don't, it doesn't work with oranges. It doesn't work with anything else. I've tried it, all other citrus and only the grapefruit work for me. I don't know what that magic thing is that they love about grapefruit but it works interesting <laughs> people are often scared of spiders in their garden they think well i got to get rid of them but they're really no. good for the garden and why are they so beneficial for your garden well some scientists feel that they do about 80 percent of the pest control in a garden and um you know other than what the birds do and what the lizards might do um, they eat grubs, they eat larvae, they eat, they catch, believe it or not, mosquitoes, they, they catch other spiders. They are the beneficial predators in a garden. I'm, I'm not afraid of them. I mean, I don't want to curl up in bed and sleep with one, but they, I watch them in the garden. I've had to watch them because I've been drawing them and studying them. And they're just an amazing, amazing predator in the garden so they're taking out the things you don't want they may get an occasional spider but they are beneficial to us and we need to protect them and we need to not spray them or kill them and let them do their thing and that's all part of a good balanced and well nourished garden and that's what you want right you want you want things to be sort of balanced and that's what they do definitely so we've really enjoyed having you on the program how can people find out more about you well, I, I'm on, um, I, you can get on my website, and that's SharonLovejoy.com. That's easy. <laughs> Instagram is just Sharon Lovejoy Author, and Facebook is Sharon Lovejoy or Sharon Lovejoy Homes Gardens Books. And um, I try to post faithfully on Instagram and give garden tips and, and do different things to get people excited about the natural world around them. Get them away from the television. Absolutely. And if you're looking for some good books to look at, read, and help your garden grow better, Sharon Lovejoy has the, those books available at her <laughs> website. Very a, a lot of great knowledge there. Thank you. And we thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and our listeners and educating all of us. We thank you for that, Sharon. Thank you. Keep on doing what you're doing. We appreciate that. And when we come back, it's going to be your garden questions, our garden answers. This is The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest from their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. Japanese beetles show up in summer for a feeding frenzy in your garden, and they are the worst party guest 
feeding on leaves, then laying eggs in your lawn for next year. Japanese beetles can decimate your plants and trees. Protect your plants with Japanese beetle traps from rescue. New this year, rescue has refilled lures to use the same trap again the next year. Made in the USA by the makers of the popular rescue fly and yellow jacket traps. Learn more at rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-U-E dot C-O-M. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. Thanks for listening the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joe and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zyme, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Time for your questions, our answers. If you've got a question, we've got an answer for you. You can send that over via email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or if you'd like to talk to us, you can send that over via phone call to the Proclamation Goods hotline brought to you by Proclamation proclamation hotline brought to you by proclamation goods that number is 1-800-927-SHOW 1-800-927-7469 proclamation goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef their pans are non-toxic have a lifetime warranty and are made right here in the united states their award-winning stainless steel proclamation dual cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stock pot that doubles as a wok Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with a versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supplies limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. All right, let's go to the hotline. We had a question um, listening to us on the Roar of the Rockies, 1360 AM, over in Colorado. My name is Marilyn, and... I have seen my first two grasshoppers, and I'm wondering if there are conditions in my garden that are bringing them in, if they've been in the soil. I'm not a fully organic gardener, and I don't, but I don't want to use poison to get rid of them. I'll live with it. But um, I'm just wondering, is there something I can do now I'm in a zone five to take care of not having the big amount of grasshoppers this year. So um, thank you for your program. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Well, thank you for listening. And uh, we do have an answer for you in regards to your grasshopper concerns. Absolutely. So you can grow a number of plants that grasshoppers do not like. And so this includes anything from dianthus, lilac, forsythia, crepe, myrtle, moss, rose, verbena, salvia, sage, juniper, um, artemisia, and jasmine. You can also plant grasses around the perimeter of your garden, very tall grass, and a lot of times they will feast and hide in that tall grass as opposed to feasting and hiding in your garden. You can get garlic spray. This will, um, you spray it on um, around kind of where you see the grasshoppers, and then that will help get rid of them. You can also use neem oil. You want to make sure it is the cold-pressed neem oil. That's another good alternative. And then you can also use um, diatomaceous earth, especially if you do find that they are feasting on certain areas of the garden. And then there is also some not so, you know, natural ways happy stuff <laughs> but it looks like that there are a few different alternatives that you can use um especially the tall grasses they will you'll find you'll find that they'll be more attracted to those than anything else and a few few grasshoppers are not bad it's it's a balance so you know if you see a whole you know 
feel full of them, then then there's some uh, situations in which you can take in order to get that back in check. All right, Holly, this question is sponsored by Fleet Farm and FleetFarm.com. Any reason I can't fill the bottom or I should not fill the bottom of my raised bed with pine needles? Our boxes are about 20 inches tall. Yeah, so you can fill the bottom with pine needles. It won't affect the soil as pine needles will neutralize the pH by the time they turn into soil. And that can be a number of years. But uh, yeah, go for it. Nothing wrong with it. All right. I uh, had a question here. I am a gardener in northwest suburbs of Chicago, Holly. And I started my onions from seed indoors in late January and transplanted them in the garden in early April. The greens are growing beautifully and the plants appear to be very healthy. I trimmed the greens down about four inches to encourage the growth bulb growth and i have read and heard from many other gardeners the greens uh from heard that from many other gardeners the greens have shot back up within two weeks and i have not noticed much bulb development when should i expect those bulbs to start developing how long does it take for the bulbs to develop and is there anything i can do to encourage that they're getting about eight hours of sunlight and um and they in the high heat love the show any advice would be much appreciated well we thank you for listening to the show yeah thank you and there's a couple of different factors here yeah so just want to say hi shy town neighbor friend down in the south um so there may be a few factors one is that you might have planted short day long onions or midday onions and you need to plant long day onions in the north for bulbing or in our general region um, if you do not have long day variety, you will get little to no bulbs. If you did plant the long day variety, you will start to see bulb growth from the daylight, like right about now reaches the 14, 16 hours a day. You want to keep them watered and, um, otherwise, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. The, the concern I have in that description of that question is they're only getting eight hours of sunlight. Yeah. Onions are a very unique crop that are very sensitive to that day length, that light availability. Even though you're getting 14, 16 hours of, of daylight, if they're not getting direct sunlight, they it can greatly affect the size of the, the bulb and when that bulb deve- begins to develop and how large it gets. So those are some things uh, if you're having issues with onions. What variety? What are, are you growing short day, long day, or neutral day? That is typically one of the biggest oopses or uneducated or unknowing uh, reasons of why you're not getting good onions. So the next question is, I have learned that green radish pods are edible outside of eating them raw. What else can you do with them? Well, there's several different things. And the radish pods, as you let your radish go to seed or as it goes to bolt because of the day length and the heat, they go to flower and they begin to put like pea pod seed pods on and if you allow them to go uh through its complete cycle they will dry into a a paper-like pot if you catch them early you can eat them they taste exactly like the bulb there are some varieties rat tail is one of them in which you is are they're specifically grown for that seed pod edible portion of it they don't produce a bulb at all but your normal champion radish egg uh, easter egg radishes left alone long enough they will produce a pod and you can consume it raw or people will pickle them you can put them in stir fry salad you can dip them in hummus and uh, you can put them in like um, burritos taco burritos that type of thing uh saute them in any type of uh Asian dish is uh, instead of using edamame or immature uh, soybean pods, you can substitute that for radish pods. Correct. So um, our next question is, is that you the we have a a listener from the Roar of the Rockies, KHNC 1360 AM. Another one from out there. How are you doing out there in Denver? Here's a question. Hi, Joey and Holly. How do I eliminate Russian sage? It's taking over. Help, please. All right. There's four steps in which you can do it. One, over water that ex- excessive water will cause bad health to the plant and root rot and uh, poor root development, and it will eventually kill the plant and die, and you can remove the stump um, when it when it dies, uh, typically over winter. Uh, you can cut it back to the ground 
and then uh, moisten the soil around the stump to loosen that up, and you can dig the stump out, discard the stump. Don't put it in the compost because it can grow again. You want to throw it in the trash or burn it. Um, let's see. You can treat the plant with an herbicide. Not recommended by us, but if you need to use a harsh chemical to spray um, the plant to make sure it's dead, if you choose not to use horticultural grade vinegar or a um, a, um, a weed killer such as uh, Natural Greens products at naturalgreen.com, uh, they have a, a safe weed killer there. Uh, you can remove the suckers and offshoots uh, that spring up in the area and uh, try to stress the roots out. Um, and pull the suckers manually, putting them uh, in the trash where, where the suckers were most aggressive. You can also treat it with a herbicide. So um, that's some things there, Holly. Um, we appreciate you listening. We saw, we're sorry that you have this issue. Um, too bad it's not like thousands of tomatoes popping up you know, all over the place. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, invasive plants can be very difficult to deal with and not always the best. Um and you sometimes you just have to. I, I bet with all those, if if they all go to flower, the amount of bees and pollinators that come in. Yeah, that would be that would be nice. Yeah, a, a for sure. Alternative, a, a positive. A positive. To, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, with that being said, Holly, we are out of time, and we thank you for yours. Did you miss any portion of the program today, or would like to revisit it? Well, you can do that by going to our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener dot com, and clicking on the season six tab at the top of the page, or you can send us an email, Garden Talk Radio gmail.com garden talk radio at gmail.com and we'll send you a link to the program uh or pa- and past programs so tune in next week to the program where we'll be talking about dangerous bugs in your backyard and what trees may be best for your property our guest will be clinical herbalist and educator and food activist dana dana falcone dana falcone dana. Dina Falcone, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden.